Okay, everybody, good evening. Hello there. This is Apostle Dr. Lennon, this is Apostle Jeff, and we're from Covenant Life Church, and we want to thank you for joining us tonight. All right, tonight we're doing a little bit of uh, Friday table talk uh, in our area. It's uh, severe thunderstorms tonight, so uh, we thought it best just to do Facebook tonight and uh, keep everyone safe. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, we're glad to have you. We're glad you joined us. And uh, we, we sure appreciate you. And uh, I'm going to have Jeff just say a quick prayer, and then I'm going to do a quick announcement. Okay. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you for uh, this night. We thank you that it doesn't make any difference. That it's Friday the 13th. We're not superstitious. <laughs> we don't care. We thank you, Lord, that you, by your spirit, you're moving among us. And, Lord, you're preparing the, the enemy the army of the lord amen and lord i think i just feel led to say this that to keep hope keep hope maybe you're worn out from wondering when the prophetic word will come to pass or if you misheard god yeah. you have to be been praying and praying and still don't know what next step to take it's time to let god restore your hope amen in this new season the bible and the prophetic gifts are coming together in even greater ways so we can hear god more clearly for our lives as this happens you'll get greater insight into god's divine direction for your life amen in jesus name we pray amen, amen. so where you were thank you honey amen so we want to thank you for tuning in tonight amen and uh, again if you're new uh we want to invite you to our website www.covenant-life-church.org and uh, we have a donate button in the upper right hand corner and we appreciate very much any donation that you all can send. And folks, please be in prayer for Apostle Jeff and I. Amen. Uh, the enemy has been trying to hit us with different things uh, lately, as well as the eldership and the whole church. And so we just appreciate your continued prayers. Okay, with that, we're going to turn it over to Apostle Jeff. And he's got a great sermon tonight. Amen. So thanks, thanks for tuning in. Amen. Okay, bless you, honey. Amen. So tonight I wanted to go over uh, the the basics of deliverance mm -hmm. we have a uh, deliverance conference coming up and we have a lot of newer new people that may or may not understand deliverance and ab about demons and our authority and power over them uh, so i thought tonight we would at least cover the basics so that when the deliverance conference comes and our deliverance ministry is here, uh, you, you can not only receive, you can learn how to deliver your, yourself. Amen. You know, every believer has authority over the devil. Every single one. And so we need to understand who we are in Christ, <clears throat> what our authority is, and how to exercise that authority. Now, of course, Jesus came and taught how to uh, how to do deliverance, and and we take our teaching and our and and our understanding of how things work from what Jesus taught us. So, if you'd open your Bibles to Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1. Uh, we're going to look at the very first encounter that Jesus had with demons, all right, the, the initial encounter, okay, and we're going to see the pattern of how Jesus handled it. And I, I want to just let it say, while we're here, there's no Old Testament record of anyone driving out evil spirits. So it begins here in the New Testament with, with the ministry of Jesus. Mark chapter 1, verse 23. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. I notice there was a man, he was in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. Do demons come to church? Yeah, you better believe they do. And... Uh, that's one of the things I want everyone to understand. When you hear us praying, binding spirits or binding, taking authority over the sanctuary and things like that, we do that because we see right here 
this is a sanctuary, a synagogue. And, and on top of that, it's not only a synagogue and, a, and an assembly of God's people. Yeah, Jesus is sitting in there too. All right. And this being had an unclean spirit. Now, when it says it had an unclean spirit, it means he was demonized. All right. Demonized. Uh, de demons don't take possession of believers they can afflict them they can be demonized but they can't be possessed all right let's get that out of the way right now before you know people start getting excited now this man with the unclean spirit and he cried out saying let us alone notice the plural let us alone more than one let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now, obviously, when it said, and he cried out, it wasn't the man speaking. All right. It was the spirit in him. All right. And, in, and there was a group of them. Let us alone. And notice they said, we know who you are. Have you come here to destroy us before the time? Notice that the supernatural, the in the supernatural, demons recognize authority. They recognize who has spiritual authority. All right. They also can control the voice of someone they in whom they inhabit. All right. And they say things, and they also said. You know, have you come to destroy us? So they know there's a day coming when they're going to be destroyed. And they know Jesus has the authority to do that. And they challenged him and they challenged his authority. Understand this. The devil and the, himself and all his minions, all the principalities and powers and, and demons, from the lowest to the highest, have to submit to the authority of Jesus, okay? And they recognize power and authority when they see it. They laugh at anything else. And they also know that there's a day coming when they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be judged. And since they know that, and since they know God can do that, because they were judged once already when they fell and became demons. So they know when God says something, it happens. And they're not afraid to confront. They're not afraid to confront God himself. So you, you know they're going to confront you, right? But in the name of Jesus and with the anointing and authority he's given us, we have power over them. All they can do is try to convince you that you don't. And that's why they put on these grand displays, you know, like uh, in that movie, The Exorcist, you know, with the head turning around and throwing up pea soup and all that nonsense. You don't have to do put up with that. All right, look at what Jesus did. First thing he did was say, be quiet. Be quiet. Why? Who wants to hear from a devil? Amen. Who wants to listen to a demon? They're liars. And their boss is the father of lies. So you say, be quiet. And come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. 
All right. So there's these demons. There are different types of demons. Okay. Sometimes, uh, you know, we say a demon of uh, infirmity or a demon of <coughs> lust or something like that. That might be their chief characteristic, but they can do other things too, all right? Notice this spirit convulsed, convulsed him when he came out. Sometimes, if it's an especially, in a case where there's a severe case of demonization, sometimes when they come out, they can rend this physical body because they don't, have, they don't want to let go. They don't want to leave. Demons want to stay in a body. Okay. Now, Mark 9, you're in Mark, go to the ninth chapter. We're going to look at a different kinds of demons. Mark chapter 9, verse 24. <clears throat> Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him again. He was convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead. So then he said, he's dead, right? But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Now notice, <clears throat> again, the physical body had, had a reaction. That doesn't happen all the time. In fact, it doesn't even happen a lot. But sometimes it does. And if you see that, don't get excited about it, all right? It's just the devil saying goodbye. That's all that is, all right? Jesus rebuked this spirit and told it to leave. He means, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Okay, when spirits come out, they're going to try to come back. And in order to prevent that, we're going to study that in a minute. But you've got to do more than just cast them out. You've got to make a, 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 a place in the person's insides where they have the, 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 the doors closed to whatever the enemy used to get in. And they have enough understanding and enough faith in Christ that now those spirits can't come back, right? So Jesus dealt with the spirit in the man. And it, he was, in the Greek word there means demonized, not possessed. To be demonized is not to be possessed, right? This is a continuing ministry of Jesus. It's associated with healing. Now, sometimes I've heard this uh, from people that don't believe in deliverance. In fact, they don't think uh, Christians can have a problem with a demon. Of course, you know, the one saying that probably already does <laughs> have a problem with demons. But in any case, uh, they say that uh, they'll say something like, uh, you know, there's no, no uh, gift or there's no ministry of deliverance. You don't see the gift of deliverance. And they're right, there isn't. It comes under gifts, plural, of healings, plural. Okay, so most of the time, the people who don't believe in demons don't believe in healing either. In fact, I don't know what they do believe, but in any case, it comes under gifts of healing, all right? Healing and deliverance are combined together. Luke 440, when the sun was setting, so that means the Sabbath was ending, 
all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him and he laid hands on every one of them and healed them and demons also came out of many crying out and saying you are the christ the son of god and he rebuked them did not allow them to speak for they knew he was the christ now here's the thing some people were just sick some people were sick and had demons not all sickness is means somebody has a demon okay you pray for healing in that case well what if it is a demon well you need discernment that's what the discerning of spirits is okay you you uh, god will reveal when you're dealing with a spirit and ordinarily when the healing power comes on so, on somebody that has a spirit you're going to see a reaction those spirits are going to react they don't like that spirit the holy spirit uh being around them all right <laughs> now <clears throat> Let me say this, if somebody's not saved, don't cast the spirit out of somebody who's not saved. Make sure they get saved first, and then you can kick the demon out, all right? Because if you kick the demon out and there's nothing in there, uh, there's no Holy Spirit inside that person, then that spirit's going to come right back, all right? And notice that here again, we see this is in Luke chapter 4, verse 41. We see again, they have supernatural knowledge. They knew you are the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Who wants the devil's testimony? All right. Jesus didn't put up with it. He didn't ask. He doesn't need any credit from them. He knows who he is. All right, you don't come out of them. And that's what you do. You command them to come out in the name of Jesus. All right. In this particular case, this was a group setting. All right. There was a, a lot of people there. And he laid hands on every one of them. So sometimes that we lay hands sometimes we give the command to a, a large crowd all at once which method you use uh, you have to be led let me say saints if you're going to try to deliver people from demons you have to have a very close walk with god and be able to discern what the spirit is saying to do healing ministries deliverance ministries have to have an special uh, especially close relationship with the Lord, because you're you're confronting directly the powers of darkness. All right, you're directly confronting Satan. You're taking territory from him. All right, you're you're taking you know things that he thinks he owns. You're taking it away from him. And that's important as we enter into this army of the Lord movement, as we become the soldiers of the army, we have to understand it takes a close, close walk with God. All right. I remember one time Linda and I were went up to Washington uh, for uh, to do some witnessing. And we put some tracks in my uh, pocket in a I have a pocket Bible uh, that I put in my back pocket. So when you go to witness, street witness, you don't walk around with a Bible in your hand because people automatically get nervous when they see a Bible. I just stick it in my back pocket, okay? And we came up out of the subway and we walked, we just got out on the street. And here's this heavy set guy sitting there in a park, on a bench there on the street and i walked over to him i hadn't said a word nothing and he started hollering no 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 i don't want any of that i don't want that i don't want any of that go away from me 
and he's creating such a uh, a pretty good scene. <clears throat> we tried to we cast a spirit out of him, but he wouldn't move. Now, why? Well, because that guy wanted that demon. And listen, if you want a demon, you can have one. All right, they'll stay. Amen. And you know what? God will let you keep them too. One third of Jesus' ministry was spent in healing and deliverance. One third of it. So if I, I don't know how anybody can think that that's not for today when a third of everything he did while he was here was healing and deliverance. No one was sent out to evangelize without being commissioned to deal with evil spirits. No one. No one. You have to be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. You're going to run into demons when you witness for Christ. Now, I know most of the time you talk to somebody, it's just a discussion. There's, there's no manifestation of any demon or anything. <laughs> I understand that. But still, there are times when demons will manifest. And I'm here to say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's what they do it for. They do all that carrying on to see if they can run you off. They're going to challenge your power. They're going to challenge your authority. They're going to challenge your identity in Christ. You have to stand your ground and say, keep quiet. Come out of him, you unclean spirit. Amen. Now, Jesus equipped the 12. Amen. He gave them power over unclean spirits. All right. That was his 12 disciples. Then later, he had 70 disciples. He empowered them with power over unclean spirits. And then, of course, the Great Commission which is to the whole church, to all of us, Matthew, Mark 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. All right. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. What's the very first thing? They cast out demons. They speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it'll be by, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. You so see, that's the demonstration that the kingdom of God has come. Jesus said, behold, the kingdom of God has come. Repent and make way for the kingdom of God. We demonstrate the power of our king. We demonstrate the authority of the kingdom that you and I live in. All right. This is especially true if you're called to be an evangelist. You have to get equipped with healing and deliverance. Apostles and evangelists are the ones that really, really have to em get in, emphasize this type of ministry. Now, personally, I don't go looking for a fight with the devil. I don't. But if he shows up and he wants one, I'll give him one. All right. Demons are personalities without bodies. They're discontent if they don't have a body. All right. When Jesus cast the demon, demons out of the madman of Gadara, they wanted to be put, allowed to go into the pigs because it torments them when they don't have a body. And that's because there's, they don't have any expression in this world unless you have a body. Okay, that's why they seek to embody people. That's why they seek to control people. Because demons can't do anything on their own. Amen. A demon can't start a war. He has to get into somebody like Hitler and start a war. All right. They have to have a body. 
then they have two objectives to keep you from knowing Christ as Savior. Well, if you're listening to me, uh, they already failed in that attempt. And the second objective is to keep you from serving Christ effectively. All right. They don't want you to serve him. They don't want you to be close to Jesus. They want you to stay away as far away from him as you, they can keep you because you're a lot easier to handle. But anybody who's connected to that main source of power, to the word of God and to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, man, you're a load. You know, when we used to play football in high school, if there was a big guy across the line from you, you used to say he brings a load. But listen, when you show up in, in deliverance and in spiritual warfare, you bring a load when you're close to God and close to uh, you are filled with his spirit and his authority and his power, man. And they, and they know it, too. Believe me, they can. We might not always be able to tell the difference between the false and the true, but demons know. All oh, they know when that power of God comes on somebody and they start to use it against them, they are terrified of that. They are terrified of that. Amen. <laughs> now, this is another reason, another thing I want to explain to you. When you got saved, Certain sinful things left your life. All right. They just left. Maybe it was drinking beer. Maybe, I don't know, whatever it was. Some of those things went away right after you were saved. That's because those spirits had control of your soul. When the Holy Spirit came into your body, came into your life, pow, those things got knocked out and you were instantly delivered but we're not instantly delivered from the sinful nature we inherited from Adam. We still have that. It's what the devil uses against us. It's the only thing he has to work with is an unrenewed mind and uncrucified flesh. That's all he's got, but it's been enough, hasn't it? <laughs> Good Lord. Anyway, so we have to distinguish between flesh and demons. Flesh is the carcass, and demons are the vultures that settle on the carcass. Flesh must be crucified, and demons must be cast out. I want to say that again. Flesh must be crucified, and demons must be cast out. There's too many folks that think that going to a deliverance ministry is going to cancel whatever flesh issue you have and let me say if it's not a demon it's not going to do anything and a lot of times it's not it's uncrucified flesh I, I hate to say it that way because people get discouraged but you need to get strong you need to get to suck it up and get ready because you can crucify the flesh you can grow in christ likeness you can become more like Jesus. Now, the characteristic or activities of demons, they entice, they entice you to sin, they harass. By harassment, I mean, there's a, here's a spirit I think all of us recognize, and that's the, what are you going to do, spirit? What are you going to do? Amen. What are you going to do? When you have a problem, the first thing is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You must have that thought 20 times a day. Say, in the name of Jesus, shut your mouth. Get away from me, you unclean spirit. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to have revelation. I'm going to have spiritual discernment. I'm going to have wisdom. I'm going to have the mind of Christ. And this problem is going to get solved. That's what I'm going to do. All right. That's harassment. And then there's spirits that torment. Torment. <laughs> Example of torment is somebody who, for, who refuses to forgive. If you refuse to forgive, you're opening an, a, a beautiful opportunity to spirits of torment. 
Amen. Because all it does is keep that past hurt alive in your memory. And it keep you keep going over it and over it and over it. And take my word for it. The person who offended you is not even thinking about it. All right? It's not bothering them. It's bothering you. All right? Unforgiveness opens the door for torment. And then there are spirits that perform false signs for false prophets. Yeah, there are demons that work acts of power. And I, you know, it's amazing. Uh, people are so hungry for the supernatural. They accept just about anything supernatural. And saints, I'm here to tell you, not everything that's supernatural is God. Okay? There are deceptive demons out there doing, dece doing deceptive miracles. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, there is. Other religions could do healing, too. Did you know that? In Buddhist temples, sometimes people get healed. Healed. Did you hear what I said? Healed. They also get deceived. <laughs> All right, and if the, and there are demons there performing works of mir of power and miracles. <laughs> There's some churches that they consider uh, miracles are something like uh, a pain starts uh, starts to cry or uh, blood appears on a statue or. There's some aberration that they see in the sky, you know, and all this kind of thing. And that's all demons, dear. That's all demons. All right. There's physical torment, like uh, arthritis. A lot of times arthritis is a, can be a spirit. It can be. There's mental torment. The biggest example of that is fear. Fear has torment. There's spiritual torment. Some are afraid of having committed the, un the unforgivable or the unpardonable sin. Let me say to you, if you're worried about you having committed the unpardonable sin, if you're worried about that, you're not. You haven't. You haven't committed the unpardonable sin. People who have committed the unpardonable sin are not worried about it, okay? They don't care about it. They don't want to hear anything about it. If you're concerned about it, that's the best evidence that you haven't. So the first thing you need to do is tell the devil to shut up. Be quiet. Be gone from me. Forgive whoever you need to forgive. And get rid of that torment. And then, of course, spirits cause uh, enslavement, ad addictions. And they deceive. Demons de deceive. There are some groups that like our Savior's name, but don't follow through with his teaching. You know, it's Jehovah's Christian witness. There's nothing Christian about them. Or the, uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints of Jesus, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Well, there's no such thing as a Latter-day Saint. You're either a saint or you're not. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and repent and receive him, you're a saint. And if you haven't, you're an ain't. But you know they have miracles? Whoop. Well, they do. Yes, they do. In the Mormon church, there are miracles. So what I'm trying to get across to you tonight, among other things, is don't think that just a spiritual manifestation is always from God or that it, it's a testimony to the greatness of whoever's doing it. Listen, if what they are teaching isn't in alignment with the clear teaching of this book, the scriptures, I don't care who teaches it, whether it's me or somebody else, whoever it is, 
they're wrong. All right? And there's demons behind that. Do you need something? We're all good. Huh? You want to sit down? Yeah, we're all good. Okay. Why don't you come sit down? Okay. Do we have a question or anything? No, we're all good. Okay. No, that's all. Right. Thank you. All right. Let's see. In general, people that are dealing with demons are restless in some area. Okay. There's the main area of resistance is pride. Proverbs 25, 28, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Did you hear that? If you don't have control over your own spirit, if you don't have self-control, you're like a city with no walls. That's referring back to, uh, you know, ancient days. You know, what they call a city is, is in New York or San Francisco or anything like that. A city was a group of two to 5,000 people at the most. And they had their houses inside walls. And the walls were there for protection. So when an enemy came, they would man the walls and defend their city and protect their city. And this is saying that if you don't have self-control, you're like living in a city with no walls. Cities that had no walls didn't stay cities for very long, long. Behind every negative emotion and attitude, there's an evil spirit. Okay. There's evil spirits that control our mind. There's evil spirits because they can control the mind, can control our tongue. The sex, sex is not evil inside of marriage. But every form of compulsive sex, sex aberration is demonic. Lust. Now, we usually think of sex as lust, but lust is any inordinate desire, perverted desire or appetite. First John 2.16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. Then, of course, the occult, all false religions, all false facilities, all cults, all things like the Freemasons, they are driven by demons, all heresies, any departure from the Christian faith. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit expressly says in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So what is a deceiving spirit? It's a, the spirit that comes and convinces you that what some false teacher is saying is right. That's a deceiving spirit. And doctrines of demons are what they teach. That teaching is sponsored by a demon. There's a, please don't move. There's a, a certain group who teaches that you have to keep your, your Saturday Sabbath to be saved. That's a doctrine of demons. All right. So this is how they come in. All right. Occult background, all right? Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Exodus 20, verse 3. I'm going to turn there. I want to read this because it's so uh, abundantly clear. Exodus 20. Verse 3. 20, verse 3. <clears throat> You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, 
visiting the inequity of the fathers up upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to keep those who love me and keep my commandments. All right. So <clears throat> all forms of idolatry is forbidden. Idolatry exposes people to demons. All right. Now, there, you know, there are certain places, certain religions that have statues. And if you ask them, they'll tell you, oh, we don't worship the statue, we just venerate it. Well, I don't know what the difference is between worshiping something and venerating it. No, sense saints we don't deal with with statues all right there's a place down by uh fort belvoir it's on a side road and uh it's some type of buddhist temple isn't it yeah and you, you go by there they have the most hideous looking statue i have ever seen in my life out front wow and when i see it it just it, it all it's almost frightening isn't it dear yeah, it really is. It's the a, wickedness and evil that comes yeah. from that. So there's that. And then there's the personal occult involvement. Personal occult mm -hmm. involvement. In Deuteronomy 18. Amen. Deuteronomy 18. Verse 10. Let's go to verse nine. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall learn shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, mm -hmm. or one who practices witchcraft, mm -hmm. or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer. Or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I think it's interesting that today there's not the occult is so popular, mm -hmm. you know. I'm here to tell you that nowhere in the Bible, and especially in the writings of Moses, is there any kind of magic that's approved of. Okay? We need to be careful. Even magic that's supposed to be just for entertainment, there's nothing entertaining about something that mimics what the demons do. Okay, honey, Michelle, let's go to question. Who? There's a question right there. Oh, from Jan. How do you define deliverance to someone who doesn't believe in demons or doesn't know about deliverance? You don't. If they don't believe in it, you can't define it to them. Okay? You just tell them what you believe, and you can't force somebody. If they, you know, and I understand what you're saying. I mean, it seems hard to believe, but there are people out there that don't think demons are real. You know, uh, uh, you know, I, I question, are they saved? You know, I mean, I could, that's a kind of a, kind of a, an opinion that an unsaved person would have. I'll tell you the, the gr greatest evangelist you'll ever find is somebody who gets delivered from witchcraft. Amen. And the reason for that is they know. The dark side is real. Yeah. So if the dark side is real, the, the good side is real too. Mm -hmm. So is the side of the, the army of the of, of light. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, you can only present your case and say what the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if people don't believe it, well, they're going to have to give an account for that. And, Jam, you know what? I, I would not try to prove it. No. I, okay. It's better just to say, Lord, reveal it to them. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Okay. I have another question. Example of a, of a prayer to say to intercede for someone who needs deliverance and isn't a believer. 
You don't do deliverance for people who are not believers. Yeah, but she's saying, how do you intercede for them? You intercede, the Lord saves brother or so and so. Yeah, and Lord, Lord save. Right. Uh, I don't know, Janet or Lord save. Right. Uh, Arnold or whoever you're dealing Lord, with. Lord, set them free in, in your time. In Lord. your time and, and witness, witness to them about the gospel. Amen. They need to get saved first. Right. Okay. That's the most important thing. When a, even a saved person who's afflicted by a demon, mm -hmm. when you leave your body, you leave that demon too and go straight to heaven. Yeah. All right. So that's the only way you can, all you can do is pray for somebody uh who's having a problem like that amen you know and, and you know if you're discerning that they have a problem with a spirit and you want to witness to them bind the spirit first mm -hmm. and you don't have to do that in front of the person because you know they they will be with a demon all you all you christians are nuts you're fanatics you know like before you talk to them i talk to the lord first and then i take authority over any spirit mm -hmm. that it keeps it it has to stay quiet it can't talk it can't deceive i bind your power in the name of jesus and i release the holy spirit and the conviction of the holy spirit in jesus name and then i talk to him amen all right <clears throat> amen all right you know, there's prenatal influences that cause people to come under the influence of demons. All right. Uh, they did, uh, they noticed that there was a great deal of depression among a certain age group. And they did a study and they noticed that most of the people in that age group were born during the time of the great, the great depression when the announcement of having a, a baby wasn't always good news when a mother and father didn't need another mouth to feed and sometimes they were saddened about it well back in the days of the great depression there was no such thing as abortion thank god and so some children were born into an environment where they really weren't wanted and they deal with rejection their entire life. It's amazing. It's very sad. All right. There's there's soulish. Uh, there's people who manipulate and control manipulation by another person, mm -hmm. whether they're in your family or not, can result in somebody struggling with a demon. Mm -hmm. You see, if the if the devil can convince you you're too short you're too tall you're too fat you're too skinny you're too this you're too that whatever and may and you sense that rejection he can he can play you like a fiddle amen and just bear in mind that god can always heal that that's right amen mm -hmm. yep god is in the healing business yeah. So even though these things go on with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And you just keep on believing for healing. And if you, you will reap if you don't faint. Amen. Disharmony and strife between parents can expose a child to demonic influence. You have to understand demons don't play fair. All right. They don't care he's only five years old. He'll jump on him in a second. It's parents' responsibility mm -hmm. to see that babies and children are loved and nurtured and cared for and not exposed to wickedness, not exposed to manipulation. Maybe you want Johnny to grow up and be a world-class uh, runner like you are. Well, maybe that's not God's plan for Johnny, all right? You let Johnny find his own way. All right. So how to be delivered? All right. How to be delivered? First of all, we have to be humble. 
We have to be humble enough to understand we have a problem. Now, if you are trying, and this is, is only is something you can do, only you can do. If something has been troubling you, there's a, a sinful situation or activity that you want to get rid of, and you've done everything you can to get rid of it. All right, you, you fasted, you've prayed, you've done all, all that, and still it persists, or it's sense, or you, there's a sensation that it feels overwhelming to you. Mm. You're a candidate for deliverance. Until you do those things, though, it takes you have to be trying to crucify the flesh. If you if it doesn't, if you can't, then there's a good chance that you're dealing with a demon. You have to be humble enough to under to acknowledge you have a problem. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with other people that may be called to try to help. You have to confess your faith in Christ. Confess any known sins by yourself or by your ancestors. Repent of all sin. Proverbs 28, 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. You need to break with all cult curses and secret societies. And there's more to secret societies than just the Freemasons. There's a lot of secret societies out there. You know why? Everybody likes a secret. <laughs> Amen. There's something I know that you don't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> stay away from secret societies. Stay away from the occult. Amen. Amen. And then according to Mark 16, 17, you expel the spirit. All right. Now, why some are not delivered? Some are not delivered for lack of repentance. Some are not delivered because they lack the, des the desperation to be free. They're passive about it. And some are not delivered because of the wrong motives. You know, if you if you got a demon and you want to keep it, you can. All right. God will allow it. God will allow you to keep it, but you don't have to. James 4 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. You, you may spend it on your pleasures. There are people who fake a, a demon or fake need a need for deliverance because they want the attention. Now I've seen that. I want I don't want to say many times, but I've seen it more than once. Let's put it that way. That there are people, listen, you have to have that mercy on people. There are people who are so lonely and so brokenhearted and so desperate that that's what they do to get attention. Amen. They crave attention. You, your heart has to go out for somebody like that. Amen. But instead of demons, they don't need a demon cast out. They need some love and affection Amen. and some fellowship and some compassion. Don't ever jump ugly on somebody. Always, always be a person of the love of God. Amen. All right. Uh, people aren't delivered because of self-centeredness. They want to keep that attention. Some people, uh, there's they fail to break with the occult. There are some of secret societies uh, that if you break with them, it can cost you your job or your promotion mm -hmm. or your acceptance as one of the boys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Failure to break with you. Get rid of occult objects now. I have to stop there and emphasize this a little bit. 
don't allow occult pictures in your house. Amen. Don't allow occult music in your house. Yeah. You're listening to me, mom. You're listening mm -hmm. to me, dad. Yeah. You don't allow kids to wear pentagrams. Yeah. You don't allow demonic things in your house. Oh, it's just a piece of jewelry. No, it isn't. It's a symbol of demonic power. Mm -hmm. And it may or may not have been dedicated to the devil. But the fact of just the fact of the matter that it's there gives him an opportunity. Yeah. All right. You know, just uh, get rid of all occult objects. If you have a ring from a secret society, get rid of it. Yeah. If you have a necklace from a sorority, get rid of it. Amen. Sororities and uh, what are the things boys do? Fraternities and, Fraternities and sororities. Yeah. They have secret passwords and secret handshakes and secret this and secret that. You know, a lot of that's just fun and games. But when they start dedicating that yeah. to spiritual beings, you're inviting demonic activity. Okay. okay here's a question. Uh, yeah. What are examples of secret societies? Would this be the Masons or other such groups? Yes, it would. That's exactly who I mean. The Freemasons. That's one good example of that. Knights of Columbus are a good example. Eastern uh, Star. Eastern Star. Uh, I can't think of the rest of them. A lot of them, even simple things like uh, the uh, Fraternity of Oddfellows. <laughs> They're odd, all right. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's, uh, uh, I, I can't remember all of them, and I don't want to mention some and, and find out later, you know, that they don't do that or something. Because, you know, I haven't gone to the Rotary Club. I know nothing about them. I've heard there's things there that aren't right, but I've never been there. Or I haven't really gotten into it. I don't know. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. And let me say this, anything that has to have secrets is not probably is not a place where God is welcome because God does things out in the open. Right. All right. You know, he, you know, Paul told uh, the king, you know, you, you know, that Christ was crucified and rose from the dead. And I know you know these things because this wasn't done in a corner. <laughs> you know, when God wants to do something, he just does it. And he doesn't care if anybody likes it or not. Amen. He just does it. He's going to tell him you can't do that. Right. You might try to tell him that, but it isn't going to do you any good. So get rid of occult objects. Get rid of anything that savors of superstition. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a... A thing called a, I think they call it a, a witch's cane or or something. I'm not sure. It's it's a piece of jewelry that's like got a little crook, crook to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, here again. Oh, you know, it's just a piece of jewelry. Dungeons and Dragons is just a game. No, it isn't. No. No, it isn't. All right. Failure to sever evil binding soulish relationships. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh yes. There are a, a evil relationships or a binding soulish, somebody who's manipulative and controlled. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm married to one like that, please. I'm not talking about, it. I'm talking about you got need to work that out. But you know, there's somebody that used to be a, you're where you used to be real buds with. Right. All right, and they're like that. Okay, there's one more question. You need to break it. And mm -hmm. we advocate breaking soul ties. Mm -hmm. Amen. You want to explain that, Linda? Yeah, it's really simple. They say, Lord, uh, I break the soul tie between uh, me and Iraq and Iraq and me. I break it right now in the name of Jesus, and I set my spirit free to serve Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's a question here. Yeah, the question is, how about items from travels from overseas places? 
depends on what the uh, what the item is. Okay, it depends on what it is. Uh, some countries have more demonic uh, things than than other countries. But, uh, you know, the way things are going now, even here in the United States, there's a lot of stuff. You know, I, you don't, you have to have wisdom. You have to discern. Yeah. I mean, I remember reading uh, one of Derek Prince's books. And he, he brought home from one of his overseas trips, I think it was in Thailand. He brought home two paintings from Thailand. And all of a sudden, they were having all kinds of problems in his home. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told him, get rid of those paintings. Mm -hmm. And he threw those, and they're expensive too. Yeah. He threw those paintings out and his problems went away. Amen. Personally, yeah. if in doubt, throw it out. That's right. the way I look at it. And one okay. more question here from Alice. Okay. Some of my family members were high up in the Masons and Eastern Star. These relatives have passed away. Do I need to pray or break these associations? Yes, I would. I would break those associations from you. Okay. In fact, we'll do that right now. Just raise your hand. Yeah. Lord, we take authority over those Freemasons and the Eastern Star and anything in our past. Yes. Lord, that, that was not pleasing to you, that's related to us. We draw the, we draw the bloodline. Yes. We we break the curses. We break the yes. demonic influence. We break uh, the demonic power associated with all those things. We break them off ourselves. We break them off our family. We break it off our children and the coming Amen. generations. Amen. And we set ourselves free. Amen. If, if you're in Christ, you're free. Amen. In whom the sun sets free. Amen. is free indeed and alice uh, another tip with that you can do you can stand as a representative for your family yeah and you can say lord i renounce on behalf of my family bloodline right i renounce all freemasonry living or dead right i renounce it all i first i, I repent father for getting involved in something that shouldn't have been and i renounce it right now in jesus name and I break the soul tie between me and the Masons and Masons and me on behalf of my whole family. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, this is why some deliverance doesn't work some, for some people. And let me say this, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this. There are some spirits... Remember that example we had, this kind doesn't come out except by prayer and fasting. Amen. All right. There's the, just like there's levels of power in the angelic realm. There's levels of power in the church. There's levels of power in the demonic. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need help to get rid of a spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. How mm -hmm. do I know? Like I explained. Mm -hmm. There's an issue in your life. You've done everything you have, tried everything you can to get rid of it. You, you, you don't like it. You don't want it. Uh, but you can't seem to get out from under it. You're a candidate for deliverance in a deliverance ministry. You know? I mean, if you just don't pay your tithes or something, uh, that's not a, a demon. That's just being greedy. But, you know, pornography quite often is a spirit, all right? And sometimes you need help from other believers. And let me say this. I, you know, I kind of hesitate to say it, but I believe it's true. You need to go to somebody that you can trust, all right? There's two places where there's a problem, I think. One of them is in uh, is in the area of intercession. You know, everybody gossips about everybody else. Also, everybody can pray, of course. And then there's a when somebody where somebody comes for deliverance, 
and they you reveal some very personal struggle or issue i would say go to somebody that you can trust amen. i would i would make sure it was somebody i could trust amen because you don't need some blabbermouth mm -hmm. and we've seen this happen it's happened to our own family in our own family somebody went for prayer to be set free from a certain situation and not only were they not set free but the person that was told this particular information blabbed it all over the church mm -hmm. the guy got so embarrassed and so humiliated he hasn't been back to church since yeah are you listening amen i feel sorry for mm -hmm. whoever did that yeah. that is keeping someone from the church and from being a part of God's family. Amen. God help him. Amen. Uh, so Father, we seal the word. Good job, honey. Right. We seal the word right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to do just a few prophecies and then I'm we'll wrap it up tonight. Amen. Nice job, honey. Okay. All right, this first word is for Sinatra Baudry. And I, excuse my hoarse voice tonight. Amen. Father, we just thank you. We stir up the prophetic and the apostolic right now in Jesus' name. And Father, first and enter, for the Lord would say, uh, sure, daughter, I'm with you. It says God, and the Lord says, you've been through a lot of things, and you've wondered, where is God? And the Lord says, the enemy had you down and out for a while. But the Lord says, I'm raising you up to a new level in this season. And the Lord would say, I'm going to even manifest my power in your life. And the Lord says, even as you heard this tonight, there were a lot of things that you can always already apply to your life. And the Lord says, as you do these things, there's going to be a greater freedom that's going to come to you. And so the Lord says, no, that I'm with you. I'm here to help you. And God says, I'm undertaking for you. And I heard your prayer. And the Lord says, I am with you. And I'm setting you free this night, says the Lord. So, Father, we just release that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this next word is for Dolores Woodson. Amen. Dolores, I just hear the Lord say, daughter, I'm strengthening you in this season. And there's a healing anointing coming upon you. And the Lord says, I'm not only going to heal you, but the gifts of healing are coming into your life. And the Lord says, I want you to declare a thing and shall be established and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And the Lord says, look at the debt, look at the various things that you have had trouble with and command it down and stand on it, says God, for I'm empowering you this day with a new level. So, Father, we release that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, this word is for Amanda. And Lord says, daughter, I'm so pleased with you. God says, I'm taking you this year into a whole new level of my anointing. So get ready, says the Lord, because you're going to see it manifest in your life. And with you, I'm well pleased. And the Lord says, I see your sacrificial giving, both in money and time and in personal effort. And the Lord says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so the Lord says, get ready for a special blessing coming your way, says the Lord. And so Father, we seal that right now in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, for Diamond. All right, the Lord says, daughter, I'm with you. And God says that there is even new friendships coming your way. And the Lord says, I want you to stay in tune with the church with the prophetic and the lord says keep learning keep training keep doing because i'm raising you up to new levels and god says daughter i'm going to even cause you to even have the joy uh, there's more and greater joy coming into your life there's been a lot of struggle and a lot of hardship but god says i'm bringing more joy to you in this season says the lord so father we stir up in joy right now in jesus name amen and this word is for Alice King. Amen. Father, we just thank you for Alice. And Alice, I'm hearing the Lord say that he's stirring you up in wisdom. There's a great uh, new level of wisdom uh, coming upon you. And so get ready, says God. I'm doing a new thing in your life. And healing is coming. Continue to cry out. Continue to cry out to me. I heard you. And I'm delivering and I'm healing you, says the Lord. And yes, it's incremental. 
but you are seeing manifestation of my glory in your life. And the Lord says, remember that I'm with you. So Father, we release that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, a prayer request from Jamie. Um, oh man. Praise God, there's a miracle. Father, for Jamie's husband, Father, we release the healing, miracle healing right now to him in Jesus' name. We take authority over every respiratory system, every system in his body, and we command healing. By his stripes, we are healed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. And uh, we want to invite you to go to our website, www.covenant-life-church.org. Please go to that donate button and please sew in tonight. Amen. We still have bills to pay and we appreciate your donation. Please be in prayer for all of our church and our eldership for health and healing. Amen. And we want you to know we love you in the Lord. And if there's anybody out there tonight who would say, Apostle Lynn, I'm not sure if I know Jesus. We want you to receive Christ. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, everybody. Uh, if anybody wants a baptism, raise your hand. Father, we release the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. And I, I curse out every foot pain right now. Anybody with feet pain, we curse it out and we command a healing to manifest right now in Jesus' name. We bind fear, torment, uh, anything like that that's bothering the people in any kind of way. Anxiety, asthma out. Amen. Pain in arms out in Jesus' name. Allergy reactions out in Jesus' name. By stripes, we are healed. Father, give us all a good night's sleep tonight. Amen. He gives his beloved sweet sleep in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everybody, we love you. Good night. <laughs>